diving dive medicine data is pretty hard to get because a lot of it's done with 18 to 25 year old males in like the navy um which is not really a real world situation divers here we have 26 years old to 60 something years old and they're all different body types and there's different genders and they're doing different things with workload underwater so it's a really good cohort as opposed to just males 18 25 all fit all healthy in the navy going down in a really controlled study doing like cycling underwater it's not really yeah indicative of real world um environmental conditions so we are just walking down to the dive center to meet the divers who have just come back from their dive this is a daily business of waiting for the divers uh, when they come back they'll drop off all their gear and then we will take them to the medical room <laughs> and timing is very important so the first thing we want to know is how many minutes post dive they are because we want to catch them in a 30 to 45 minute window post surfacing They are 20 minutes post dive, which means we have around 15 minutes before they need to be in the middle. Okay, so the divers have finished with the gear. They're at 35 minutes, so they're now walking down here to the medical room where they're going to meet Sophia uh, to do some of the post dive uh, service studies. Uh, because we, um, for the divers in the study, to keep them anonymous, what we're going to do is we've got a model here, Jared. He's going to show you what we've been doing post-dive uh, with the different information that we're collecting. So we'll follow you into the room. Hello, hello. Hi. 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 So we're going to start with your echo. We do a pre-cordial Doppler. So if you can lean forward a bit. We hear the heartbeat and we start recording for 30 seconds and once that's done ask him to do two squats please so again we're provocating the bubbles and then we report for another 30 seconds so we're just gonna try to find the heart so here we are looking at a four chamber projection of the heart we are especially interested in the right side which is why i'm um, focusing more on getting the right side nice and clear. Then I would ask you to flex your legs for me, please. We are doing a provocation test so that uh, if there are bubbles, they tend to come out when they do a little bit of uh, exercise. Now that I'm quite happy with the side of the right side of the heart, I store it as a video so that we can look at it later as well. Hi, so I'm here with Anya. She is doing our recordings this afternoon. Anya, why are we doing the HRV recordings on the divers? Um, we're doing high grade frequency recordings to test if it changes throughout the dive. So we give them a dive computer and then it tracks the dive profile. And then we can see if their variability increased or decreased during the dive. Um, the higher variability, the better, because it means you react to um, environmental stresses more. <laughs> um, and when your heart's less variable, it means it's actually worse because it's kind of in autopilot mode. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Anya. So she's coming out on the boat with us uh, this afternoon. So the rest of the divers, we're going to be setting up our gear now, getting ready, and then we'll head out. Um, it is pouring with rain at the moment, but we're hoping it will clear by the time we get onto the boat. We have a dive computer, we have a chest strap, and then we have a dive sensor. Um, I know you have heart rate variability on most um, watches, but it's not really clinically significant findings. Um, this is attached here and the quality is a lot better and it can go down to 70 meters. So we use these and then we... That's as much as you're getting from me. It was great. Yeah, thanks. Hey, keep going.
position. So please have your hands and then the nose clip. And then whenever you are ready, so we can start recording. So I just can stay straight and then take a few normal breaths and then just a very big inhale and then the fast exhale to the end. Very good, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Very good, a few normal breaths. Um, we're now going to go and do my um, eyesight and see how well my eyesight goes. So we're going to go find the team. Thank you. So Matt's just done his. <laughs> uh, I'm up next. Um, so they're going to test to see if it's changed from the first time I did it before I started diving. Nina is running it. Anya is writing down. Nina, why are we checking our eyes? <laughs> uh, there's a process of myopiization, which means that oxygen and pressure can change the um, sphere of your eye. So we can track how that changes over like 35 years of diving. Cool. That's a much better answer than mine. I was just like, see if they get Okay, worse. let's see how they go. <laughs> Same left to right? Yeah. And it turns out that I have. I have great eye bells, uh, so, so I can see 20, 20 10. Yeah. Where can read these ones? Genius. Eye bells are genius. Thank you. That's my last test. Uh, so now that all the diving is complete on my end, I'll have a chat to Sophia and see um, how this month has gone, a month of diving, and what my results look like. It's the end of the day. <laughs> Sophia, what are we doing? I'm trying to upload all the data. The internet is not great. <laughs> Our Starlink is over there. <laughs> it's currently showing me that it will take 5 hours and 14 minutes to upload one echo. The joys of working in, the, in a remote tropical island. <laughs> Welcome to the Micronesian sunset, which is today slightly less sun and slightly more rain. <laughs> this is normally where we end our day. Um, we've come down here just before the team, um, before we have dinner. Um, but we just want to say thank you guys so much for watching, um, seeing behind the scenes of what a day in the life of our expedition here in Chuk Lagoon. We're collecting some really interesting data, which will hopefully come up soon. And maybe you'll hear a bit more about it in Down Europe. Thank you guys. <laughs>